Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to Park Drive 32, a channel dedicated to the creation of a 32 bit game. And I am your host, Alice Holgate. Fantastic to have you here. And I hope you're having a wonderful morning once again. And yeah, I'm super duper excited today. We're, we're doing the substance painting of Val, which is going to be the lead character for the prototype game Aspire, which is a survival horror based on the concept of you are ascending a tower. I should say a cyberpunk uh, setting mega skyscraper tower that you're ascending that has become infested with insect humanoid hybrids. It'd be pretty cool. And right now we're working on doing the lead character of it, and all of it's kind of inspired by, uh, like, say, the old Resident Evils or Silent Hill games. This would be a lot of fun. And yeah, so between now and, and yesterday, I did some adjustments to the 3D model itself, uh, and I'm a little bit happier with how the character is looking proportionally. And we're gonna do probably a couple more little tweaks, make sure the UVs are okay, and then jump back into Substance Painter. And that's kind of the general goal. So yeah, let me take a moment here, and I'll show you guys too, just real quick here. This is... This is what the character concept art was that we made for it pretty quickly. So this is Val, kind of the goal we're trying to translate this to 3D. And then I wanted to show you guys also... Where is it here? Uh, this is the kind of 3D I'm going for, what kind of model I'm going for. This is from Resident Evil 2. This is Blair. So this is the kind of look I'm trying to achieve. And if you want to see what that looks like as far as the texture goes, it looks like this right here so this is kind of like the texture look that we're going for whenever it's all said and done and so let's jump to the 3d portion of it so i'll show you guys what i got up and going on it there we go so this is val as she stands now and she's doing good thus far here guys <laughs> so yeah all right so what I've changed since our last stream is is I adjusted some of the geometry as far as her arm some of her hip ratio like her her the ratios of her body and there's little things I even still just seen here I wanted to just tiny tweaks here for example, I think I'm gonna take a moment here. Let's bring down. Yo, hip bones are looking a little odd. Scale in the waist just a little bit. Nice a pinch. Do I want to adjust it even further? I think so. But yeah, because there was just proportionally some things I wasn't. I want her to be super fit, and so whenever I was initially making it, I had her... <laughs> Thank you, Kurtabot. Um, I'll buy tons of followers my t with my tens of dollars. But, when I was working on this character, I wanted her to be buff and huge, and so I had her broad-shouldered, and that's fine. But I don't want her to read as unnaturally masculine, which it's like, and I still might tweak this. It's almost like a, I don't know if you guys know, there's a character named Chris Redfield in Resident Evil games, and he slowly became more buff and more like obscenely big as the games went on. Let me see if I can find you an image here. So this is what Chris... Let me find Chris Redfield in Resident Evil 1. Look at this dorky man. Look at this tiny dorky man. This is how Chris Redfield looked in the original Resident Evil 1 game on the right. He was teeny tiny! He wasn't on the roids, he wasn't nothing. And so... This is how he appeared, and then at the end, we'll type in RE6 Chris, which is like the epitome of his bulkiness. Fine. Let's find 
meat boy. Oh yeah, there you go. Look at her, <laughs> jacked up our man that's become. So, what I was thinking would be fun for this character is I do want her to be almost like the Bruce Willis, uh, in this case, like, uh, you know, kind of like the powerhouse type, and she's going to be making the struggle through the survival horror, but she, I do want her physically fit. Like, I want her to be like, kind of like, bigger. But that'd be fun in this, you know, the first game to make her somewhat just strong, but not like, kind of like Resident Evil 1, Chris. And then if I do eventually make other games in the series, God willing, and if I do like working on it, uh, her to eventually get more and more bulky to maybe become an RE6 version of, of her. Actually, here we go. We can just really quickly model that. What I want to do is, this is her in the first game, and then we can find it here. all sorts of crazy tools. This is how she looks now. And then in the sequels, she'll be... Oh, one thing. Not that player tool. Where is it at? Bruh. I should remember if there's like a bubble tool. Oh, you know what I could do? A warper. You ready, guys? This is how she's gonna look in the first game, and then by the end of the, the last game, we'll have her bulky as I'll get out. <laughs> Warp. Yeah, so Val in the first game. <laughs> there. Val in the sequels. That's my goal. <laughs> First game, last game. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. Wanted to be physically imposing, but still not to read too much. Um, that would be super masculine. And so my original 3D model was just a little bit off. And so I've adjusted that since. Um, between now and yesterday's stream. Just kind of like played with the 3D model some. Um, so yeah, just mess with her hip ratio, kind of other things like that. Just trying to, to make her model a little bit better, played around with her hair. Uh, I fixed her collar since the, uh, yesterday's stream. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to really quickly just look and make sure my UVs aren't messed up so that way I can export her back to, uh, Substance Painter and get back to work. Oh, cool. Here. All right, because there was a few things I did change. Specifically, I adjusted this crease line here on her chest. And let's see if the geometry attached correctly. All right, cool. That looks good. So then maybe it's just her back that got messed up. Yeah, you see here, guys. We got some floating. Some floating points here, which should go up here and connect. So let's really quickly, we'll take these, this bit of geometry here, and we'll weld it to her chest. Let's make sure I get the correct side. So this is the left. It looks like it's mirrored, so we just need to go over here. So we go up here. We simply need to hit here. Voila. Actually, yeah, we'll do that. So GX. We'll line them to. The pre-existing geometry. Also, by the way, guys, in the last stream for the heck of it, I was like, I'm gonna play my own music for this this stream. I'm just gonna see what happens uh, and discover what sort of what sort of uh, copyright claims I can get 
And boy, oh boy, the algorithm worked quick, let me tell you. I got hit with so many claims in the last video. It was wild. Which I'm kind of, like, okay with. I hate to say. Um. This is, this is just for fun. But it, it hit with so many claims that it couldn't display on certain countries, and the visibility got hurt. So currently you guys are listening to some generic music. That's my DMCA free music. I want to explain how much music I just have played in the background for this channel though one day. Or, for example, there's a couple of really good DMCA <coughs> music producers that I want to play on here for you guys sometime. Alright, so that's great. Go us. Now, the one thing I also want to say, so I realized something, and the collar is a great example of this, but also, like, say these, these pants. If you look back at the Resident Evil 1 model of Claire, one thing I noticed is a lot of the detail work is simply represented by the textures. She has a very smooth form. She doesn't have a lot of, like, parts sticking out. And I think that's very important and that the subtle details should be represented within the textures and not necessarily with geometry. And whenever I was building this character, I didn't quite do that on a few points. So like her pants here. And so, and part of that is like, since it's such low geometry, whenever I'm painting on the surfaces of it, just the way the, the 3D painter is interpreting my brush strokes, is very uh, harsh in a way. So one thing I'm gonna do really quickly is some of these elements that are sticking out here, I'm gonna actually um, get them a bit closer. Like I'm gonna um, weld them, or I'm gonna, sorry, uh, merge them with the pre-existing model because I think what I need to do is have a lot of that, those details represented by the texture themselves and less represented by the geometry. And that's just so that things look better, so. Let's see here, which I... Right. So like, for example... Oh, let's see if I can do this without messing up, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like doing this, and then what I'll do is I'll... I'll bring these outer edges in a little bit more. It's not going to work in all cases, it looks like. That's okay, though. Mm. Oh, shoot. I just realized, guys, while I'm doing this, I need a mirror on both sides, but... Let me try something. There's an easier way for me to do this and let me, uh... Since all of the edges here, and then afterwards create the geometry, the respective geometry. <laughs> okay. And we gotta remove ingons, which are any parts that are five sided, but as you see, like back here. That's perfectly good as a quad. That's not gonna work as a quad necessarily. Now it does. This could merge here. Yeah, I'm kind of, what I want to do is reduce the triangles, reduce the fine edges, but still have the details there. <laughs> Oh, by the way, guys, yeah, here in a little bit, too, I want to tell you guys about my impressions on Arcane, the League of Legends show. Wow! I've only got to see, I only had the time to watch the first episode last night. I wanted to watch so much more. What an incredible show. Whoa. There are sometimes, like, creative works that are just bafflingly good. And that would, that was one for sure. So if you guys haven't seen League of Legends... A uh, new show on Netflix. Go check that out immediately. I'll talk more about it here in just a little bit. Uh, but right now, I'm gonna let my 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 soft baby brain work through 
some of these elements here. So maybe, you know what guys, maybe I do need to leave, I, I'm gonna leave this geometry. Let's not throw the, the baby out with the bathwater, but I will say I do need to bring these points in a bit. So let's scale these in, so it's not as prominent. This is an idea. <laughs> this could work. It does lead to a slight triangle, but what I kind of like about this and is this actually a closer representation of what I was hoping to achieve with the hands. I'll have to bring that geometry down. I like that. I think this is, yeah, this is gonna be a big improvement. That will let us work here. I just can't give up on things, guys. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, we're gonna have to adjust this geometry a bit, but that's actually a better representation of what I was wanting to do with these pants. So, go act me and accidental, <laughs> accidental fixings. Man, I so wish I could play you guys this music I'm listening to. I've been such a 90s anime, or 90s, ja like really just 90s Japanese music kick. And it's funny to go back to the music I listened to when I was in high school. Things like Malice Miser and Gakuto and Izu and all sorts of this old school stuff. Boom, me likey. Okay, let's try to get everything on the same mirror here. So really quickly. This is actually better. Go me. <laughs> Just self patting my little back. Go. I did the baby thing. I did some baby modeling. Yay. So satisfying, just a slight problem solving with this stuff. Okay. And let's bring this down. Ooh. By the way, I'm almost thinking I'm gonna, you know, keep modeling in Blender for now. But now that I've got a teacher's license, I could go and I could go and maybe get uh, 3ds Max, which I do know how to use 3ds Max. It's been a long time, but I could, uh, I could use some 3ds Max if I wanted to instead of Blender. But admittedly, man, let me tell you, I've grown so accustomed and kind of love Blender at this point. It's a very like the interface is just so. It hides a lot of things. I'll give it. Uh, that's like the big negative is Blender hides a lot of its of its features, but once you understand it, it's quite good. The edge there for the back of the leg isn't fantastic, but I don't think I want to necessarily adjust things too much. Okay, so let's see here. What could we change here? Alright. 
like these. Yeah. Let's merge that one. And that's a that's almost a little too stretched there. This This is all of that edge. A new one here. I wonder if there's, the one thing I will say is I wonder if there's some really good memory, mirroring tools I could be using here to better adjust this geometry. Disconnect here. Did something can be adjusted? I think, yeah, let's slide this. So that way it really connects with the. Grab that one. There. That way the geometry is flowing with the. where the back where our skirt is here. Cool beans. Beans, cool. Cool. Beans. Yeah. And then one thing I was thinking about doing too is rotating these just a little bit. Rotate on the Rotate these on the Y. Grab these edges here. Just because the shoulder is more rounded, it's not like it's not just a harsh line here. I was thinking about it last night. I was like, and yes, slightly just says. Rotate Y. Cool. Okay. Me happy. I think we're good to export this. Uh, look at these UVs for just one more moment here. Looks <clears throat> like so I need to do a very tiny quick adjustment here. So it's overlapping in a way that's really bad. And then here. That just needs to be connected, thankfully. Okay. faces and what I'm dealing with here. 
this is a case of mirroring, so. some of these here and let's move it up. Oops, I'll select both islands. Bruh. Just one island, please. Ah, you are such a jerk. Let me see if I can just select one island. Okay, let's move it away for a second. See what's going on here. So, I mean, it's not terrible looking. This one isn't. Because they have overlap. Honestly, the same. Um. So they should be identical once I. Hey, original one. Good to have you over here on Instagram. Let's go back here. Oh, they are. <laughs> so they do flip the the triangles of those legs. Oh, they're reversed. Oh, what a twist. So let's let's solve this this conundrum here. Yeah. You look, I'll show you right here. These two faces here. This triangle and oh gosh, this triangle is like just annoying. That triangle are reversed. I can solve that though. I have I has ways. What I do is where this fate or this one is, I can actually disconnect it. Um Split. There we go. Alt in. Should let me. You better let me split this. Come here, thing. Let's see if I have to do both of these. I never had to do this. I know I can. Oh, you know what's probably happening is because I have auto merge. As soon as I split them. They're probably re-merging, so let's see if I can do that again now. What? what? <sighs> What do? What to do? Ah, let me go to the Googles. I'm curious about that. Oh, you know what I... I got it, guys. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. There we go. Okay. Solved. I should have thought about that. I uh, just need to do it as a face. So we'll undo this real quick. Alright, now we got it. Voila. Yeah. Just had to do it by, by face, not by... Not by... Uh, vertice. Hey, 
And it was auto merging, that was part of it too. So as soon as I got done doing that, it auto merged. But yeah, yeah, so last night I got to watch the first episode of Arcane League of Legends uh, series that's based on their lore, and particularly the characters uh, Jinx and Vi. And oh my goodness, guys. Uh, the, the, every, a lot of people have seen what Riot can do with their music videos, and just how good they are at combining 2D and 3D. But man, I could not... The first episode of Arcane alone was almost too much for me in the sense that I was like so distracted by the visual splendor before me on screen that I couldn't focus on the the storytelling aspects of it because I was just so enraptured by what they were doing visually. And the storytelling is great. It's got this very fairy tale like vibe. Like the the characters and all of them are very archetypal or not sorry, uh, stereotypical. Um, you have like the mad inventor, the uh, the uh, adoptive father, and um, sibling rivalry, and all those kind of things. But that doesn't that doesn't discredit how great they are at just conveying the emotions of these characters and making them endearing. It's just uh, astounding how good the economy of the storytelling is for Arcane. Like, you very quickly understand who the characters are, what their motivations are, what their loves are, what their dislikes are. And they're so charming. There's all these little touches that make them so charming. For example, Jinx, who's the younger sister of I, and what will likely be an eventual sibling rivalry, as anyone who plays League of Legends knows. Uh, she's just a young girl here in this series. And she tinkers with, she creates objects from the trash and refuse of the, the land. And it just, she makes little pets that are her friends. So it's very, to give you an example, she takes um, like some tin cans, paints on like a mouse face, gives it teeth, and it acts as a weapon for her too, as self-defense. And just think about that concept in general does so much to convey like her situation and her storytelling. So one, these toys aren't just, you know, a way for her. She's making friends out of trash, you know, like all the other gutter, like they live in a poor community. So she's creating tr uh, trash into pets that can be her friends to help with her loneliness, as well as like these t creations are born out of the kind of dire state of the world around her. And the fact that they double as self-defense shows how vulnerable she is as a character in this dangerous neighborhood and slums that she needs to create these self-defense items. Like, you just... That one... That one act alone of her creating these little defensive pet toys out of trash... I'm gonna say trash like a thousand times. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna come up with other words for trash. Uh, conveys so much of her character within that. And that's what I mean by the economy of storytelling is the uh, the characters inside Arcane, they just have certain actions that tell you everything you need to know about their characters. It's fantastic. Yeah, oh, good morning, Nikki. Welcome. So yeah, I cannot recommend Arcane, League of Legends Arcane on Netflix enough. It is got that whimsicalness of a storytelling and is just visually incredible. Oh, and speaking of what's so visually incredible about the show, so what makes it so amazing is that they they end up. Oh, one second here. Oh, look at this. Oh yeah, looking great. <laughs> Oops. When I export from Blender, I forgot to say export. Please only the selected objects. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> I did it! I kept my word! Yes, that's right! I watched it! I watched the first episode! Thank you, The Sneeze! Yes, I'll always keep my word and walk, spend my time watching silly shows. But what is just insane about that show 
is Riot combines 2D and 3D elements so freaking seamlessly, guys. I just can't even convey how insane it is because there is so much that goes into combining 2D and 3D. Like you gotta nail the lighting, you gotta nail the style. And that's the big thing is like, all these 3D characters are lit. Um, they're the, the way the light is on them, the way the, the, the light colors the characters is an identical match to all the hand-drawn elements in the background. It's nuts. <laughs> like you can't even, the blend between the two is just nigh seamless to where I just, when I'm watching that show, I just, all I want to do is dissect it. I just want to frame by frame dissect it. It's insane. Like the, the only other uh, creation and recent, there's a couple creations recent in memory. One is Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, which is a movie that you haven't, if you haven't seen, go watch it. It's great, both in story and in visuals. And that movie is another example of uh, a creative team given full license and the budget to make something that's just so different. And I'll give you one example, which is usually, if you guys think about films, like, or other things, I put this soda can in front of you, I put this this beautiful monster soda can in front of you, the camera focuses on this, everything behind the soda can is blurry, because it's called, it's focal depth. That's how everything generally works in film. What's in the foreground gets focused on, what's in the background gets blurred. Not the case in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. They did something insanely different. They wanted it to look so much like a comic book, that they're like, nah, nah, nah. That's not how a comic book works. There isn't blurry things in a comic book. Instead, when things are in the background, they have like um, a halftone patterning. And if you if you guys don't know what a halftone is, it's kind of like how comic books when they're printed, they they make little red, green, and blue dots, and those little red, green, and blue dots are what form the image. And so. What they did instead of making things blurry in the background for Into the Spider-Verse is they took that red, green, and blue dots and the things that are out of focus or the, those dots are slightly moved a bit more. And they did that so that way every frame of that movie looks like a comic book panel. It's nuts. It's so cool. You could take any frame, you could pause Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse at any frame and nothing is blurry in the shot nothing in the background is blurry instead there's just these little dots and so you could print out as wall art any any frame from that movie it's insane and that's what i'm talking about whenever someone takes 2d and 3d and combines it in just an incredible way Whew. can't stop talking about how much i love that thing man there we go guys oh yeah look at that Oh god, I'm learning so many lessons. Here we go, guys. I gotta do it again. There's gotta be a way I don't have to do this again. <laughs> Come on, thing. Maybe it's auto unwrap. Let's cancel out of this. Let's not save. Let's see if we can re import this model without losing everything. Losing all my hard work. All those single, singular lines that I drew. And I so wish I could play this music for you guys that <laughs> I'm listening to. Yesterday's stream was the test for how good uh, YouTube's algorithm was at picking up copyright music. And boy, they're good at picking up copyright music. It's hilarious. My I, previous stream, I turned off my DMCA free music and I just played my Spotify, because why not? And just see what happens. And if you look at my YouTube copyright claims, it's just like a mile long of every song that I played in the background. <laughs> Eat that, music owners. I don't give an F. I'll play what I want to play. Alright. Back. Normal. Now let's see if we can re-import that new model without it messing up. Let's see if auto unwrap was a problem. <laughs> Oh, I know. The YouTube execs, man, they're itching for a fight. They want to take me down, but I'm too powerful. I have tens of followers. 
How are they going to compete with that? They can't. Also, by the way, I'm going to go research... Oh god, I have to redo most of this. <laughs> Why? It's going to look a lot better for it, though, boys and girls. This is, that was the last time I'm doing that. Last time I'm just on this geometry. But... I was gonna tell you guys, so I haven't seen the commercial yet for YouTube's Metaverse. Uh, what is the YouTube Metaverse? What is what is it they're they're bringing to us as normal humans? Am I am I going to on my Facebook account? Am I going to upload my brain and be a part of the system? Is my Mark Zuckerberg gonna flip switches and then control my brain? I mean, if Mark Zuckerberg could give me a deal on some video games, he can have control of my brain. I'll join the many. Let's do this on... the UV map here. There's it, there's it. Here. Still kind of learning how to control this setup here since I updated to the new one. Oh, here we go, guys. Cool. Got my Buffalo Bill skin here. Now I can draw on it. Easy. Easy. Also, I'm really excited. Last night, I got my custom map all finished for Mario Party. So, just gotta set the day and time, and then um, I'm gonna play. It'll probably be next week, depending on the availability of a certain friend. <laughs> I'm gonna play some Mario Party here on stream. And um, on that front. Probably my the way it's looking is gonna be myself and my lady. Why is it coloring like that, bruh? It's acting like there's additional geometry there when there isn't. That is so silly. Yeah, but my wife's gonna be my backup in this this epic struggle against a human boss fight, as my friend is uh, fiendishly good at Mario Party. But not this time. This is the time that we overthrow and win. Where is her abacles? Ah, there's her abs. Also, yeah, quickly, I don't want her skin color to be this. I'm gonna be darker. She's, this is never. This wasn't my initial plan for her skin color, anyways. But it was just a case of what I had in my concept art initially. It was not my intention. That's a lot better. Oh, choose. What was it? What was it? 
Gonna be cool. Cool beans, guys. Good stuff. Now we can move on. All right, I'm gonna be right back. I gotta use the restroom as this monster is kicking it. Be right back. from the token. Much better. I'm glad I adjusted the character. I'm sad I have to redo texturing. But the thing is, like, all of this can get better with time. That's fantastic. Okay. Alright, so... This is my goal here, what we're trying to make her look like. Pop it open on another screen so I can just glance up from time to time. Yeah, but I really adjusted things so that way it's not as prominent. Let's do, I'm gonna do some lines real quick just to indicate locations of things. Um, sketch lines. here and where's my shell bat there it is black let's go Get that red. It'll be good. All right, let's see here. I love at least that whenever uh, Photoshop bought them, how things have got so much more standardized inside of 
subspaders been fantastic. So some of the well, some of the elements of it are great. Sorry. Uh, thinking through it. I should probably be doing this in mirror mode. As to... I got a smaller number, okay. Sad it's not fully mirrored. Bit of a problem. We're gonna keep going now. to revisit this too and do some additional uh, potential work on this too. To where there's more details in her character design. We'll get there. I think these hips could come in a little bit more. Free those dips in just there. That thankfully won't make us lose any work. Well, just that. So far, so good though. Been a good day as far as adjusting things and getting things done. I think those geometry changes ended up being making a pretty big deal as far as how uh, she looks. Oh, come on, Linda. I would love to get a new GPU, by the way. Just find a new graphics card. They're just so hard to get right now, though. I, uh, we live in a small town that's not in a place that you think there would be a lot of demand for graphics cards. I think what it is, is the amount of scalping that's going on. Like, we have a Best Buy, and it was learned that our Best Buy was going to be getting in some graphics cards, like 30 of each of the different 3000 series. And we had, it was like a little, it looked like a campground. There's so many people in tents outside of this, of our Best Buy. It was just insane. It's just so unfortunate, too. It's just like, possible to get a graphics card now, thanks to all those scalpers.
go in. Uh, let's see if I want to adjust it. Ah, that's pretty good. All right, let's do a re-export. I'll export as FBX. Selected objects only. It shouldn't do anything because I didn't really change anything. Oh, let me save real quick. Now try it again. Settings. Oops. Edit project configuration. Let's get all the good. Okay, <laughs> I was like, it shouldn't change anything. I'll have to get all the shortcut keys memorized for this program. If I can roll faster on it. spacing on my stroke. What? No. Why you do why you do this? Well, that was fine. Surely. Oh what the heck guys? <laughs> Do that with other brushes, so I have to figure that out. Yeah, I have trouble painting too on certain surfaces. It's just not great, man. I think these things are stuff I can probably fix with time. Oh my gosh, it's not even detecting that. What the hell? Let's <laughs> do it by camera. A little better. I need to come back on these knees too, bring them inwards. Go 
those can be shut down a bit. Those are meant to be like little buckles. They're too big. Let's see, it does it perfect here. That has me so concerned. Mouse does it too, so it's not a issue with the uh, Windows Inc. I wonder it's because... Let's check something else. I have an idea. Maybe it's because I have mirroring on. And it's already a mirrored surface. Yep. There you go, guys. That was it. Mirroring on a mirror, already mirrored UV surface led to that problem. Got it. Let's have to remember that. I think this can be reduced to... How... Pronounce the edges. Also... You see how it doesn't know how to interpret that surface there? Because uh, the normals, aka the direction in which the these quads and surfaces are facing, are not easily translated by the camera. So something that you just. I also think this collar needs to come closer. Gosh, there's always little things. All right. Starting out real quick here. First things first. Mm -hmm. Let's start from the bottom and go to the top this time. We're gonna take these. I'll be out this far. Let's go inwards. And what was the other thing we were going to do with them? Oh, we're scaling them. We're going to slide these loops upwards too. need to be, they're just meant to be buckles, so they're not, don't need to be so pronounced. That's significantly better. Nah. 
and shrink these bad boys too. I just wish they would slide appropriately on there. Girl, that's not where you should be sliding to. Let's see if I can just do it this way though. Just be like, come on, thing. Wow. Yeah, you know I'm jacked up I got. Easy. They're about similar size to the other buckles. Scale them out appropriately. Okay, so that's done. Uh, next thing, I'd love to bring this edge loop here. Let's bring that edge loop down. It's a more pronounced boot. And then the back of her knees. <laughs> she is supposed to be having like knee pads on, but she's not supposed to be uh have some sort of round bulbous knee here. That's just crazy looking. Let's take both of those there. Look, my man, my boys. Got actual knees now. could be smoothed a bit. They look awful odd. Not my greatest work, but that is fine. anime playlist is playing the theme song for um, Chobits. What a trip. How a thing that completely disappeared in the 90s. Solve this is Hi. rotate on the Y. Hi.
things I can correct. <laughs> That's better. That's that's a cleaner little line there. anime music is ridiculous in a great way. Wild to listen to this after so long. It just got so much joy. There's so much joy in the 90s. It was a happier time, my friends. <laughs> Not that we can't find joy now. I just want to say... And then after this, I'll probably just do a quick smooth on them. I definitely need to relax the tension on these. It's stuff that I just don't see till later. You know, things I don't catch till later. smooth. See now it's merged. Ta -da! If you ever have a problem where you forgot your auto merge on, you just have to do it. You can do a move where you don't move anything in actuality. And just the fact that you clicked move button is enough for it to for it to adjust it for you. Nice 
Esse. <laughs> you guys, that was one thing. It's just one of the things here. All right, next thing I want to. I think I'm gonna scale in two things here and that's actually gonna make her look a little bit stronger which is nice wait hey oh gosh let's do it one at a time so that way they keep their relative locations uh, scale point eight let's do less than that scale point nine mm, point eight five This point and this point up on the here. I might just want to round these two here in a second. adjustments. Just these points, all is at it too.
Zeta side up as well. changes. Just do this here. This edge and this edge. Are a hair too long here. And it goes one time, two times, three times, four. Make the same mistake on board. Run me to close round up. GZ two. Ho ho! GZ one. Yes! Praying Mantis style. As intended. Leave it, touch it, it's perfect. Okay.
time my brain turned off while I was reading through all that. <laughs> but I'm making sure I didn't mess anything up. Lordy Lord. I'm going to stop here soon. I'm going to export this new one here. It has a lot of little improvements and changes that I was wanting to get around to. Probably going to constantly always see something new to check, uh, fix. Just got to... Just got to acknowledge that. Right. Everything. Thank you. Stars. Cool, better. Better, better, better. Alright, we're gonna call it stop see here for now. Did some adjustments here. Got some basic line works. Got things looking like knees. That's great. She got knees now. <laughs> and uh, we'll keep playing around it tomorrow. And at this point, I think the model itself is at a really strong point to where I don't have to necessarily worry about it so um we're just gonna be painting going forward i don't see any reason why i need to jump back into that model so keep painting we're at what is it wednesday wednesday great yeah we're still on track to get i think we're still on track to get the character all painted up by this friday which is awesome and i still think yeah next week we'll be doing the animation stuff so once again thank you again for being here on hard drive 32 here every morning, Monday through Friday, working on through two big game stuff. And always a pleasure to have you guys here. You have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow morning. Ciao!